I will lift up my eyes to the mountains. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He will not let your foot slip. He who watches over you will not slumber. Indeed, he who watches over Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. L'Éternel est celui qui te garde. L'Éternel est ton ombre à ta main droite. Pendant le jour, le soleil ne te frappera point, ni la lune pendant la nuit. The Lord will keep you from all harm. He will watch over your life. Der Herr behüte deinen Ausgang und Eingang von nun an bis in Ewigkeit. Well, welcome everybody to New Ground Sunday. It's a great joy to see you and have you with us. I just love hearing those stories and hearing news of things happening around our family together. And even hearing different languages just reminds us what a joy it is to be part of uh, international family reaching many nations with the gospel and the good news of our Lord Jesus. Uh, we've just had our leadership conference. It was wonderful to be all together actually in person and to hear the word of God and to sense God's presence with us and hear his voice. One of the things we did at that uh, conference is we actually took up an offering for new ground and uh, you're in a church today probably which has either taken up an offering or is about to take up an offering after today or maybe you've been encouraged to give as individuals. And I really appreciate that this is uh, financially quite a stretch for many, many people at this time. And so my encouragement to you is if you can be generous to help us in all that God's called us to do, then why not take a step of faith? God always blesses faith. And all of us, I think, in a situation where if we're going to give, then we need to do so by faith. So I appreciate these are difficult times, but do do think of us if you possibly can. All these things set before us will only happen through your love and kindness, your prayers, and also your generosity. Well, each time we've done New Ground Sunday, I've tended to try and bring not so much of a pastoral word, but more of an, a prophetic encouragement as we move forward together. And that is what I want to do today. So if you have your Bibles with you, I'd love you to turn to Isaiah chapter 9. These are very, very famous words, but this is where I want to begin and lead on to something for us today. Isaiah chapter 9, um, there in verse 6, for unto us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. And of the increase of his government and of peace, there will be no end. On the throne of David and over his kingdom, to establish it and to uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time forth and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. I think this is an amazing passage full of some wonderful prophetic promises. In fact, talking about things that were not yet to come to pass for thousands of years. As a core team recently, we just spent some time together praying and we decided to stand back from everything and not so much talk about things in detail. And just think of the future and where we'd come from in the past and what were some of the main things that God was saying to us. During our time together, we felt God encourage us that we'd been a, a family of churches that have been established and established well. And then we'd gone through a season of maintenance, maintaining the things that had been established. But we felt so strongly God saying to us, but now you're to move into a season of multiplication. I think it's true, isn't it, for all of us that those COVID years have been an unsettling of the nest. Uh, there have been a time of, of questioning many things. It's almost like we've been stripped back, both as individuals and as local churches. But sensing at the same time, though it's been difficult, God has been using this as a time of preparation for things that he has on his heart for us in the nations that we come from. And we sense as a core team, one of those big things that we are to believe God for is a multiplication of everything that we have already established and maintained. 
Now, as many of you will know, if you've been part of the new ground world for some time, we have endeavored to have four key themes. We've been feeling God saying to us, take new ground in raising up leaders in impacting our local communities, in planting churches and in reaching new nations. And it's been a joy over these years to see these things beginning to happen amongst us. It's been a joy through the academy to train leaders. It's been a joy to have apostolic ministries coming into local churches like yours and helping you as a church to make a greater impact upon your locality. We have planted a few churches, not many, but we have begun that process. And we have definitely kept a sense of being international as a family always before us. And we've definitely helped churches to impact their immediate localities. And as we emerge from this rather strange and difficult season, I personally have seen every indication and every encouragement, particularly in the last four or five months, that things are beginning to move forward towards that potential to multiply. But I know that some of you might be thinking, well, you know, yes, when you come out of something that's difficult, you just get hopeful. And, and isn't this just kind of wishful thinking? Is this a kind of post-pandemic optimism that needs to come in? Otherwise, we'll all be in despair. Well, I want to suggest to you that Isaiah chapter 9, those verses we've just read, are anything other than just wishful thinking. These verses are full of hope. They're full of remarkable promises. When I read Isaiah chapter nine of the increase of his government and peace, there'll be no end. It doesn't seem to me that the increase, the multiplication of what God's doing is down to you or me. It doesn't seem to be about how many people we've got in our church or what kind of profile we've got. It doesn't seem to be about it's all dependent upon having highly gifted individuals in our midst. Isaiah chapter 9 seems to indicate that God has made promises, that he is faithful. And when he said he's going to do something, we know he's going to do it. And you know what? Of the increase of his government and peace, there'll be no end. And the throne of David is there and is established forever and ever. And I just love this last bit of, of uh, verse 7. And the zeal of the Lord, Lord of hosts will do this. Other versions have the zeal of the Lord of hosts will accomplish this. It's not even our zeal and our passion that's going to do it. And how wonderful to know that God is even more zealous and passionate than we are to see his purposes fulfilled. <clears throat> and I see in scripture that there are unchanging principles that have to do with multiplication. So our feet are firmly upon God's promises and God's power and his ability to do what he has promised. And these principles are, are a universal, they are cross-cultural, they're timeless actually. And I just want to concentrate today on just one of those principles. And it's a principle that we can be sure will flood us with confidence for multiplication and also a principle that demands a response from us so that we can fulfill our part in seeing that those things come to pass. And that one principle is a word you may have heard or a phrase you may have heard many times. And it's to do with the kingdom of God. Jesus spoke a lot about the kingdom. There's one verse that says Jesus came speaking about the kingdom of God. You may not know this, but the kingdom of God is mentioned in the New Testament 80 times alone. So the kingdom of God was a, <clears throat> a big deal both for Jesus and for the early church. And I believe it should be for us. And Jesus often described the kingdom as parables. And you could look at many, many parables, giving us an indication of what the, the kingdom of God is really like. So I just want to read these verses from Luke 13 and verse 18. Jesus is explaining the kingdom of God. And he says this, he said, therefore, what is the kingdom of God like? And to what shall I compare it? It is like a grain of mustard seed that a man took and sowed in his garden and it grew. And it became a tree and the birds of the air made nests in its branches. Verse 20 says, and then again, he said to what shall I compare the kingdom of God? It is like 
leaven that a woman took and hid in three measures of flour and until it was all leavened. Mark chapter 4 and verse 26. And Jesus said, the kingdom of God is, is as if a man should scatter seed on the ground. He sleeps and rises night and day and the seed sprouts and grows. He knows not how. So the kingdom of God is described as a seed and that that seed once planted will always grow. It will multiply. I, I love these two references to, you know, something that's even hidden in the dough. Sometimes we feel that the kingdom of God is hidden, but it's actually working. It's growing anyway. And this thought of we go to bed at night and we sleep and when we wake up in the morning, the seed has grown into this tree and this picture of a small seed the mustard seed that grows into this tree so vast that even birds come and nest in it are all ways in which jesus is trying to communicate his promise that once the kingdom of god is established it will surely grow the kingdom of god is in you the kingdom of god comes through you and me the kingdom of god comes through the church and goes out into society and the definition of the kingdom of God, in case you don't know really what we're talking about, is it describes the rule and reign of Jesus everywhere all, and over all things. In other words, wherever the people of God go, the kingdom of God comes through us individually and as a church into life around us. Whenever we pray, let your kingdom come, let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We are praying that the kingdom of God, the rule and reign of Jesus will come and affect my street in which I live, the family that I'm a part of, the workplace which I go to, or even if I work from home, my family, my friends, my school, my university, wherever the people of God go, wherever we do life, there is the potential for this seed to be planted and to grow and for the kingdom, the rule of Jesus to come and affect people's lives. There are four things very quickly that you see in scripture about this kingdom seed that is sown. The first is this, God always initiates it. The second is he always sustains it. The third thing is, it always starts small and then increases to become something massive. And the fourth thing is it's always eternal. And folks, wherever that seed is planted, whether it's in you or your local church or your workplace, it always has the same results. Luke 13 often reminds me of my own garden. So we've lived in our house for about 20 years. We have a smallish kind of garden. Um, and strangely enough, you might be surprised to know I am not the gardener, but Liz is definitely the gardener. And so she's taken it upon herself to change this garden. And one thing she loves to do is to plant something that then grows. So we have a massive apple tree in our garden. It's so big now. It was tiny when we moved in, but it's so big now. It, it, you can't even see the back wall of our garden. She just loves things to be growing. And there's this other tree on the right hand side of the back of our garden which I think is called a twisted willow or something like that. And that was planted many years ago and it was just small. I tell you what, it is now so huge and massive. We can't see anything or the neighbors because it's so big. This is the principle of the kingdom of God. Something can start small and insignificant and end up as huge because that is the principle of something that begins to grow and grow again. Here is our confidence about multiplication. If God has planted a seed, he'll sustain it, he'll make it grow, and it has actually eternal value. One commentator commenting on Luke chapter 13 and this principle of the kingdom of the seed says this, the final outcome is inevitable once the natural process of growth has begun. And it's true, isn't it? Take you as an individual. God initiated it. The Bible says you were dead and now you've been made alive. He planted a seed of life into your life. He's the one who sustains it through the Holy Spirit, through giving you people that help to disciple you, through understanding the word of God, through going through things in life that you wouldn't have chosen for yourself. He uses all of these things to sustain that seed that he planted in you. 
And then of course it grows. I remember the day when I became a Christian, my understanding of what was happening to me was real, but very limited. And as the years go by, you begin to understand more things and you begin to grow in your faith and you begin to understand and it's just wonderful to see the work of the holy spirit in our lives expanding expanding that very little thing that god began and then of course what god has put in you is eternal it says in one peter that you have been born again of an imperishable seed isn't that amazing some of us feel we're messing up, not doing very well in our Christian life, but the seed that God has put in you will last into eternity. I think that's a good investment to give our lives to something of eternal value. And not only you, but you think of your local church when it comes to the kingdom of God. I mean, it's God's plan that your church should come into existence. He initiated it. It's the ascended Jesus that keeps on giving gifts to that church. He's the one who sustains us through everything that we go through. He's even the one who builds his church and he's definitely the one who even grows his church. That's not even down to you or me. Let me remind you of what Paul said in 1 Corinthians chapter 3 verse 5. What then is Apollos? What is Paul? Servants through whom you believed as the Lord assigned to each. I planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the growth. So neither he who plants nor he who waters is anything, but only God gives the growth. And not only that, but the bride of Christ, your local church, is also eternal. She goes on into eternity and if that's true of you and it's true of the local church then i want to go further and say this principle is true of new ground as a family of churches and just to say this i don't know whether you're aware of this or not but when new front is multiplied into different families new ground didn't even exist we weren't even going to do this but through circumstances and people and prayer it became obvious that God was saying this was something we to do. So new ground was birthed out of initiation, not from us, but from God alone, which fills us with confidence. And new ground has definitely, believe me, has been sustained by God. I'm sure there've been moments when we wondered would we ever make it, but God has sustained us through it all. And we are small as a family of churches. Well, according to the principle of the kingdom there's only one way it can go then if it's small which is that it is surely going to multiply i'm trying to encourage you as we move forward that this promise of multiplication is grounded and rooted and god's ability are not on ours that's why i want us to be so filled with confidence today and this new ground in the purposes of god will also be eternal this is not dependent upon me i'm here today I'll be gone at some time, hopefully not tomorrow, but sometime. This is about a new generation. This is about things going way beyond us because it has of eternal value. This is the basis of our confidence. The kingdom of God has come. It's amongst us. It's through us. And we can have a confident response that God is going to multiply that which he has begun. And as new ground has grown and developed, it's such a joy for us as a team to see seeds that are now, that were tiny, that were are now growing. And why can't that be the beginning of many more across the UK where we're seeing growth beginning to happen? We're seeing more and more uh, folks saying, we, we feel God is wanting us to plant out. I see the seed of, that has been planted in new ground in France. It began very small through difficult times, but now honestly, when you go there, the sense of growth, the multiplication, and planting out is everywhere we see it in nations across Europe that we're involved in it's been our joy to start to be involved in Brazil it's only a tiny little seed of maybe two churches joining new ground but you can see already the beginning of multiplication I've just been in Scotland recently we've got just two or three churches there but the sense of a seed planted that's going to grow and plant and move out is wonderful We've had the privilege of being involved in South Africa and our friends uh, DNA in Zimbabwe. And we're seeing the seeds planted of growth into these nations that has the potential to reach all the nations of Africa. Come and join us in confidence that it's not just about being established and maintained, but our future is truly about multiplication. 
Having said all of that, I just want to bring, bring, bring things to a close by saying, OK, amen. That's what we believe. That's our security for the future, our confidence. But what's to be our response? And actually, there is a response that we as the people of God are called to make. So, for example, the promises of God don't become a reality until people make steps of faith. God loves faith. And when we step out in faith, we receive the promises of God. That's true of our salvation. It's true of the baptism in the spirit. It's true when we reach out to God and believe in something. It's true for all the promises that he has made. So there is a part for us to play. It's not just passive and we'll just watch what God does. He is the one who does it. But for example, I think we're called to nurture this seed, to tend it, to protect it. If you like to dig around it. So, for example, as an individual, you're called to make steps of faith. Perhaps you're called to serve in the body of Christ. That's a way of nurturing the seed to make it become more of a reality. I think all of us have been aware after COVID, we're exhausted and tired. We don't seem to have much energy to do much more uh, in life, let alone for the kingdom of God. But my encouragement to you, and I say this in a fatherly, tenderly kind of way, if I can, it is time to make some moves now. It is time to kind of speak to our souls and saying, come on, it's time to rise up. Maybe it is time for you to volunteer again. Maybe it is time for you to serve, to help your local church move forward. Maybe it is time for you to begin to give financially. You say, but David, we're in the middle of a cost of living crisis. But the reality is that doesn't change, does it? The promises of God to provide for us so that we can give out of that abundance. These are challenges, but they're important. Maybe we can nurture this seed or dig this seed around again as individuals by stepping out of our comfort zone for the first time and doing something we've not had been done before. Maybe it's a conversation with a friend or a neighbor that we've never had before. Maybe it's an act of kindness. Maybe it's just doing something that's a completely new beginning. Maybe God's even saying to some of us, do you know what, it's time to move even geographically, to go somewhere else so the kingdom of God can be advanced. And that's not only true individually, but it's also true corporately. We're called as churches to kind of dig around this seed so that we can see it come to fruition. For example, corporate prayer is our most wonderful gift from God to dig this seed, to fertilize this seed so that it begins to really grow unity always working at unity is important particularly as our churches are becoming more and more diverse we need to work at unity so the kingdom of god can continue to emerge and expand amongst us maybe it's to reach out to the poor and to the marginalized and to help people in deep need maybe your local church the digging around you do is to actually think of another church that you could plant in another town maybe just up the road Maybe for us, it's about setting up local expressions of God's kingdom in different ways that we've not done before. Perhaps it's your local church having a heart for a nation and reaching out to that nation, going on a venture. The thing I am confident about as we dig around this seed is don't stay as we are. Believe God for something new to happen. And sometimes, and just listen to me on this because you could misunderstand what I'm about to say, but sometimes it's just having a go. Sometimes it's just trying something and it may not even have the guarantee that it's going to be absolutely amazing and successful. But God wants us to take some risks. He wants us to have a go at certain things. So, for example, you go back to Luke chapter 13 and it's the final verse just to finish with and verse 7. And again, talking about the, the kingdom of God, actually, uh, uh, Luke chapter 13, verse 6 says this. And again, Jesus told them this parable. A man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard and he came seeking fruit on it and found none. So he said to the vine dresser, look, for three years now, I have been seeking fruit on this fig tree and I've, I find none. Cut it down. Why should it use up the ground? And he answered him. And it's really interesting. Sir, let it alone this year also until I dig around it and put on some manure 
And then if it should bear fruit next year, well and good, but if not, you can cut it down. It's kind of like this parable is a conversation that sometimes the seed has been planted. It doesn't seem to be fruitful, but we're called to say, well, look, come on, let's have a go. Let's dig it around and see if something happens. God's principles, his sovereignty, his ability stay the same, but we're called, called to be part of this story and not every church plant is going to succeed and not every adventure is going to be absolutely amazing, but we are called to play our part and to take a step of faith in that direction. You know, one of the reasons that tragically the church in the West is not growing, I believe is because we contain that which God wants to give away, that we become insular, that we become settled with what we have. While the kingdom of God is constantly wanting to grow and expand beyond where we are. One of the reasons the early church grew was because it didn't stay contained within its four walls, but it grew and it expanded by going literally out onto the streets. Do you know, they, they saw signs of the kingdom of God, miracles happening. Over 90% of those miracles recorded in Acts never happened in a meeting. They always happened somewhere else outside. And folks, if we're still waiting for people in our secular world to come to us, we will not see this kingdom grow in advance. But if we will begin to go where they are, as Jesus did, as his early church did, as the kingdom of God wants to do, then we will surely see multiplication. So can I invite you to come on this step of faith? Can I invite you to come and see the kingdom of God amongst us as a new ground family of churches continue to grow? Can I invite you to be full of confidence that as we move out by faith, the Holy Spirit will come and will empower us? I'd like to finish this word by reading to you um, a wonderful prophetic word that John Latoc had recently while we as a core team were having a day of prayer and fasting. I know we're having metaphors of seeds and this one goes into sails and winds and boats, but it's a great way to finish this word with us today. This is what he said. Whilst praying today, I saw an image of ancient battleships, like an armada, sailing the seas. It wasn't large, but it looked orderly and determined. However, it was coming out of a dark storm. Sails were ripped, the rigging was loose and beams broken. The, crew were, the crews were busily preparing things. Yet it continued moving onwards steadily, not wavering from its path. Such an encouragement to us as we come out of this COVID season. He goes on to say, the perspective then changed. The wind was picking up. Other boats who had weathered the storm began to approach out of the gloom and join the little Amada. Wow, how encouraging is that? I don't know who that is or what that is, but that's exciting. A formation was established. The ships began to lift full sails, catch the wind and pick up speed. I saw the crews were all on deck at their stations. I could see from above that on the horizon, enemy warships were present, but lookouts had been posted on the crow's nests of each vessel and they had spotted the enemy. They could also see a clear course to their destination and the fleet did not waver from their intended course and the wind was strongly driving them forward. Hallelujah. I sense that the Lord was saying that as we come out of the storms of recent years, there is much mending to do. However, he is sending his spirit. We must be ready to catch the wind as he blows through. We still have an enemy though, and who is still seeking to trick us and to instill fear. So we need to be vigilant and deploy the lookouts, the seers, the prophets, to enable us to navigate the course he has set. We must keep pace with the spirit, moving forward together. He wants us to pick up speed with all hands on deck 
and not alter the course. The perspective is changing and the wind is picking up. Heavenly Father, I thank you for this opportunity to be gathered together on this Sunday as churches across many nations. Thank you for this opportunity to be reminded of some of the things you're doing amongst us, this opportunity to give generously to the work of new ground, but also this opportunity to be reminded through your word of this unchanging principle that the kingdom of God comes, it's initiated by you, it's sustained by you. It may bring, begin small, but it will always multiply and it's of eternal value. And I pray today, let your kingdom come, let your will be done amongst us as it is in heaven. And would you cause these coming years to be years of much fruit? And would you cause these years to be full of multiplication? Lord, I believe it's time for us to reach new nations, to plant churches everywhere, to keep on impacting our localities. And Lord, I pray that you will raise up a whole new generation, many who will carry this forward. Thank you, Father, it's not down to us and our self-effort. But even as John just reminded us through this prophetic encouragement, the wind of the Spirit will blow through. Let your wind come. We need you, Holy Spirit, more than ever. May we catch up speed as you direct us. Forwards, onwards, into all that you have for us in the days to come. We ask it in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. God bless you. I hope you continue to have a wonderful, wonderful day. God bless.